In this video, we will be covering the USGS Earthquake Event page and the scientific products that are available after an earthquake. Below is a list of the topics that are going to be covered in this video. We have provided links in the video description to jump to the start of each of these topics for easy navigation. Let's begin. Earthquakes can happen anywhere and any time in the United States and around the globe, and as you know, they can cause a great deal of damage and destruction. The USGS provides information about earthquake hazards, where the shaking is likely to occur and those effects, and also provides a variety of situational awareness products immediately following major earthquakes that can help in understanding what just happened. Earthquakes happen because of slip on faults in the crust. Those faults are under a great amount of stress due to the forces of plate tectonics. Earthquakes can be near or far, they can be shallow or deep, they can be large or small. And those features will determine what kind of shaking is experienced, whether that shaking is violent or gentle, whether it's short or long lasting. The USGS studies the occurrence and location of earthquakes, but earthquakes can happen at any time and they usually take us by surprise. So for that reason, we put a lot of effort into being able to get out earthquake information as soon as something happens and determine the extent of the shaking, the extent of the damage, and put that information out as quickly as possible. There's different types of earthquakes. Some, uh, the largest earthquakes occur at plate boundaries, typically at subduction zones, where they're typically offshore and can cause significant shaking on land. But the worst earthquakes are those that occur in the shallow crust on land beneath populated areas. And when the shaking happens, uh, when there's significant infrastructure and population exposed, typically the damage is to the buildings, and the older buildings tend to dominate the shaking uh, damage. But on top of the damage due to shaking, we also have secondary hazards. These include landslides and liquefaction, where ground failure can add to the, very significantly to the loss of life and to the uh, damage to buildings and infrastructure. And it can also create havoc in trying to respond to earthquakes with, due to road closures, or in some cases, access to ports and access to runways can be damaged due to liquefaction of the soil. Following every earthquake that we record, we put up what we call an event page in which we collect and present all the information we have about that earthquake. That includes a variety of products for situational awareness. Each of these products is put onto the web as soon as it's prepared. That can be within minutes for some and tens of minutes to hours for others. And each of these products is updated as our information about the earthquake has been improved. Our Did You Feel It system is citizen science in action. Residents in the area where the earthquake occurred can fill out a form on a web browser or on a cell phone that reports what they experienced during the earthquake. We use this information along with recordings from seismometers to understand how shaking was distributed throughout the shaken region. This would be how far it's extended, how severe it is in different parts of the area. This information also is used to improve our other information products, including ShakeMap. ShakeMap gives a snapshot of the distribution of shaking from the earthquake. We collect this information from seismometers as well as the Did You Feel It system and present it in a map form in which the colors show the intensity of shaking. The tabs running across the top show that information in a variety of other formats that may be of interest to engineers, and also information about the seismometers that contributed to the map. Information from ShakeMap can be downloaded from a link at the bottom of the page in GIS format, maps, background information, and so forth. Pager provides an estimate of the impacts of the earthquake in terms of loss of life and economic damage. To produce PAGER, which stands for Prompt Assessment of Global Earthquakes for Response, we combine information about the distribution of shaking from ShakeMap, along with where the population is distributed, and the impacts of past earthquakes, and we use that to estimate the impacts of the earthquake. The chart on the left shows likely fatalities from the earthquake, with green indicating low likelihood of fatalities, to red being a likelihood that there was a great number. Similarly, the chart on the right shows the likely economic damage from the earthquake, from green being little to no damage, to red being damage that could exceed a billion dollars. For most earthquakes, Pager is put onto the web within five to 10 minutes. 
for the largest and most destructive earthquakes, our seismologists take a careful look at the earthquake information before putting up Pager, so it could be as long as 45 minutes to an hour. Pager is then updated as our information about the earthquake improves. Earthquake information from Pager, including the images and background information, can be obtained through the download link on the web page. Pager provides an overall sense of the level of response likely to be required by the earthquake. Pager Green indicates an earthquake that may only be of passing interest, minor damage and impacts, whereas Pager Orange or Red may indicate a regional or even national response being required to a major disaster. Our ground failure product can be used for situational awareness in the hours and days following a large earthquake to indicate where landsliding and liquefaction may have occurred and the extent of those hazards. We provide this information through charts and maps. Colored bars show the likely extent of landsliding and liquefaction in terms of area and the amount of population likely exposed to those hazards. Maps show the distribution of areas in which landsliding and liquefaction is likely to occur. Keep in mind that this information is not ground truth. It's a guide for reconnaissance and for situational awareness. It should not be used for, as a map of what's actually happened. That would be determined through observations in the field. We provide this information in a variety of formats that can be downloaded right from the website. We provide an interactive map where you can layer together our various products to provide situational awareness about the event. On a map base that can be a topographic map, a street grid, or a satellite image, you can pull together our products such as Shake Map, Did You Feel It, Seismometer Stations, Liquefaction, Landsliding, and the Population Distribution. This can be screenshot in order to share with your associates. Our aftershock forecast provides situational awareness about earthquakes that may continue to batter the area during response and recovery. As you know, any large earthquake is likely followed by aftershocks, many of which can be large enough to be felt and be unnerving, and some of which can be large enough to cause further damage. Our forecast product provides the likelihood that large earthquakes of high magnitude are going to occur in the weeks and months following the earthquake, and also the number of smaller magnitude aftershocks that are likely to occur. We provide this information in a plain language format on the first tab. A second tab summarizes that information in tables. In addition to all the information available on the website, advanced users can go to the USGS feeds and APIs to get any of the layers of the products that we've been talking about and use them interactively on their own GIS systems and other engineering and scientific analyses. In addition to the feeds and all the layers available through those feeds, we provide a software package called ShakeCast, which allows critical lifelines, utilities, and businesses to upload their critical infrastructure and facilities and compare those with shaking levels determined by ShakeMap. They can then prioritize inspections based on which structures are likely to be damaged or which structures are going to need inspections. ShakeCast is extremely important for critical lifelines and technical users who need more information and how to respond to the earthquake at specific facilities. If you'd like more information about the feeds or download the ShakeCast software, please follow the links that are available on the screen. Well, that's a brief overview of the products that we produce in post-earthquake environment. More details can be found at the links provided in the resources shown on your screen.